Well, you can't go wrong by owning a really good barbecue. A few things to keep in mind. One thing I would recommend, if you are going to invest in a new barbecue, you want to get one that's got the cast iron grates, not the little old wire ones. The old wire ones that used to come with the barbecues, like these ones here, they will rust. They won't last very long, and that's why you see a lot of these old barbecues in the side of the road. But the ones with the cast iron grates, they're easy to clean, they're really solid, and they're really heavy. So you want to keep that in mind. Another thing I would suggest to you as well, invest the money and always keep three or four extra propane tanks on hand. You know when the power goes out, everybody rushes to get the groceries in the grocery store, fill up on fuel, fuel up their generators. Propane is something that, well, the shelves can get empty of that fairly quickly as well. So I always keep a number of propane tanks on hand and it doesn't take up a lot of space either. Now, this barbecue I've had for about eight years. It's a broil king and it's never done me wrong. I keep the little uh, burners inside very clean. So maybe every couple of months I, I clean them with a the wire brush. I barbecue year round and so um, you know I really enjoy this so this really comes in handy and I never keep mine covered either if you keep it covered it's a little bit more prone to get bugs inside of it um, spiders earwigs where I live and rust as well now this particular model also has a side burner and you know you can throw a cast iron skillet on here and cook a teapot or a coffee pot and when the power does go out here, when we get a hurricane or whatever, this will, uh, I throw my pot of coffee on here. By the time I feed the chickens and the rabbits, the coffee's ready. So this is a really good alternative. So if you're gonna have a barbecue, invest in a good one, a good solid one. And for our small family here, I mean, we could feed quite a few people on this. We don't have to run it very long. Oh, another barbecue, you may say. Well, not quite. See, this is where my uh, reduce, reuse, recycle comes in. Now it's springtime here and we have spring cleanup happening all around our neighborhood. And you're gonna see a lot of these on the roadside. And the reason is because the inside of this usually rusts out and people throw them out and they get a new one. So what I've done is I've picked up this old one. I've taken all of the propane guts out of it. So there's nothing inside, just a grill. And what I do, when the power goes out, or just when I want a nice, really uh, natural type barbecue, I go in the woods here, I gather up some dry hardwood, and get some nice pieces here, and I build a little fire in here. It gets a little smoky, but then when it's down to just the charcoal, then I put my steak on here, or put my salmon on here, and um, it doesn't cost me anything. It doesn't cost me any propane. Now, one thing I'm going to suggest with you, and I'll make the suggestion again in a few minutes. I would suggest and recommend anybody, this doesn't take up too much space, and I keep this outside all the time too. If you're going to get one of these, start collecting yourself some little bundles of wood. Dry firewood, and keep, you know, cut them to length, and store them somewhere in your property. If you have a deck or a porch or something, keep them underneath there. That way when the power does go out, or when you need it, You've got your wood bundled and ready to go. Another popular method of cooking would be something like the egg. Now you've all heard of the green egg with a really hefty price tag. Walmart carries this called Le Grill, the Expert Grill, and it's less than $200. At least that's what I paid for it last year. And works very well. You can fit like a large sized turkey in this. I've actually fit two large hams in here that I've smoked myself. Um, we raise, uh, my daughter raises her own pigs and so that's where we get our pork from. And uh, I smoke my own bacon briskets in here and smoke my own hams in here. But you can also use this to actually bake in here. The temperature actually you can get it up to 400 degrees uh, Celsius, 800, 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Built very solid, very well insulated. I keep this in one of my garages here and uh, built very solid. It's on wheels so you can easily tote this around. And it's got a really nice control up here so you can control how much smoke you want in here. If you want no smoke at all, you can leave the vent open. And again, I make my own charcoal for something like this. Again, it doesn't really cost you anything to, uh, to make it. 
Now, if some of you are interested in maybe smoking or flavoring some of your meats that you would put in here, um, maple, you can get, um, you know, some branches or twigs of maple. You can actually make your own with, uh, with just a hatchet. Uh, poplar is another popular choice. Poplar is a popular choice. <laughs> and uh, I also use apple. So I've got friends that have apple trees, and whenever they do a lot of their heavy pruning, I get some uh, maybe two or three branches. Two, two or three inch branches and I, I put them through my chipper here and if it's smaller stuff I may put some in here and I, uh, I soak um, uh, soak the chips in here and there's a spot down here where you can actually put them in the, uh, in the bottom there where all of the, the coals go and uh, this does an excellent job. So this is another alternative that you can consider. It's a little bit bulkier than just a barbecue but definitely worth the investment. Another really neat item that you can consider getting is what we call a rocket stove. Now I've built these in the past using a larger four or five gallon bucket and then you get a bigger soup can and then a smaller soup can. I'm going to put a link in the description on how you can build these. Now these will run you about, I'm going to say about 150 to 160 dollars. But consider that a couple going out to a restaurant for a decent meal these days is easily going to cost you $50. So three, maybe four meals out, and uh, it'll easily pay for one of these. Now, the idea behind one of these is it comes packaged in this nice little tote. doesn't take up much space at all, and there's two components to it. There's the main burning unit, and then there's the little wood rack on here. And basically, all you do here is you start your fire down in the middle, and then you would take some smaller pieces of wood. Now this is too big here, but twigs basically, just twigs out of the wood. And you would keep feeding the wood in here. And this literally is like a rocket. The flames just shoot right up. And this surface here is so large that you can literally put a large frying pan. Cat, like I would recommend cast iron because it holds heat. You can put a large Dutch oven on here. A 12 inch cast iron frying pan with a lid on it. I'm just going to use this for an example. It just basically sits on there. And you can cook a full meal on there. You can put a big wok on there. And all you do with the wood, as it burns out, you keep pushing it in. And again, just twigs. I'm actually going to take this outside and demonstrate to you how it works later on. But a very neat little gadget. And like I said, I've built a number of these before. I've had a little workshop where we've built even really small ones that you can just carry in your pocket. Uh, when you build these yourself, you insulate them. I've used sand and I've also used perlite. Both work well. The sand one is a little heavier. When you build it yourself, obviously, there's no cost to it. Just a matter of scrounging up the materials. One thing I do want to recommend to all of you. Anytime, at, and you'll notice a lot of these, um, some of these methods that I'm teaching you require using some wood or some firewood. I recommend that you all get yourself some of these little axes. Now this is dollar store stuff. Canadian Tire may have them, but these are like three or four dollars at the dollar store. I have one in every one of my vehicles, in the back of my tractor, in every one of my outbuildings I've got one. <clears throat> They're not too hard to keep sharp, and they don't have to be too sharp, but I'm always scrounging around for a little bit of wood, and I use these all the time for something like that, so not a bad investment. Get yourself a bunch of these. Not to say they can't be used for self-defense if you absolutely have to as well. I mean, they're good to have.
little bit more committed. Here's a little old enterprise stove that I actually got for free. It's a two burner stove and I've got it plugged up and uh, got the chimney outside of my little shop here. And as you can see, I've got a little pile of wood here and I just collect junk firewood around the property here, let it dry and then store it inside. Now this doesn't keep my shop really hot in the winter time, just, uh, you know, comfortable. But the fact that I've got two burners on here that just uh, I can remove, I can basically keep some food warm on here or cook some food on here actually. And this is the ticket really. The power goes off any extended amount of time. I can bring a couple pots out here. I can actually take two roasting pans and put them across this way and cook a full meal on here. A little table here I can sit down and uh, stay warm and enjoy a meal. Look out my window at the greenhouse, at the woods here and uh, just enjoy some time. So anybody can do anything like this. If you have a little shed, a little garden shed even, like a little 8x8 and uh, you actually don't even need the stainless steel piping outside. This doesn't get really, really hot. If you can find an old stove, even one that's not CSA certified or whatever, you've got the room in your property to put just even a little shed. Insulate it and uh, you can actually just run stove pipe outside. Now the key is safety. You want to be safe. I want to make that clear. But in dire, dire times, people need to eat and they need to stay warm, especially in the winter time. And if you've got snow on the ground, you can always melt snow on something like this and you've got some water to drink. So these are just some ideas that you can consider to help you along. And sometimes uh, you just need, you know, some thoughts to, uh, to help you think about how am I going to keep warm, how am I going to cook, and uh, what can I do. And uh, so these are just some ideas. But remember also, everybody should have a little stack of wood or a bigger stack of wood. And uh, keep that in mind because you never know when it may hit the fan and you'll never regret being well prepared. And that's the key. If you're not prepared today, you may not be prepared tomorrow. So don't lose time. Go up there, go for a walk, scavenge, you know, go for a little scavenger hunt and start preparing. You'll never regret it.